Okay, Rikun's video on Saturday, the 12th of August, 2023, just gone 9.56 a.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend and time for another weekend futures market recap. We go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I show you what I'm seeing on my charts. First of all, an apology. I was going to put out a video midweek on the Japanese yen seeing all kinds of reasons why the Japanese yen might bounce around these levels that we're seeing at the moment around 70 or so but we never got the bounce and the Japanese yen continued to weaken it's actually almost close to levels that we saw about 10 months ago in the Japanese yen and potentially it is an area where we might bounce and we've got Rambo patterns going on so I think this week we'll probably uh, get that video out and just show you what I'm looking at on the higher time frame charts so uh, apologies for that and then to say we're still in France, we're going to be in France for a while. We've moved down to Avignon, which is lovely. And finally, got over my jet lag. So uh, the trading day here starts about three o'clock in the afternoon, which is really pleasant. Uh, looking at the markets during the late afternoon, early evenings is really nice. So uh, feeling good about being back here in France. Fantastic internet. We've got 500 plus megabits uh, per second and we're in the countryside effectively and the internet is brilliant. So uh, really appreciate that. French are fantastic in terms of infrastructure. You've got the TGV, which is amazing to see. There's a train station close to us where the TGV stops. And we've taken a couple of trips uh, on roads close. And when the TGV goes by you, when you're driving on a road at 130 kilometers per hour and then the the train just rips past you. It's just an extraordinary. You just feel like you're living in the future. Internet's done well. The auto routes are really good in France. A quality of life in France, if you're outside of Paris, I would say is almost second to none. Anyway, let's get to some charts. We're going to do the E-mini charts first, all the way down from the daily chart to the 15-minute chart to the 13,500 tip bar chart. And then we're going to look at the tip bar charts and the triple signals on each of the 15 markets. This is the traditional view of the better indicators. Where we've got two panels side by side, everything to do with volume on the left-hand side, everything to do with price on the right-hand side. You can see that we uh, topped out 4600 up here with Rambo patterns and an exhaustion pattern, which is unstable. And that's what's led to this weakness. Now, here are the Rambo patterns here, signaled with an R, potential reversal of an amateur breakout. It means the move is being led by the amateurs. The average trade size is low. And we can see that amateur activity buying those highs, expecting it to keep on going and keep on going. And we reversed and went the other way. As soon as we dropped through the lows of these amateur bars, this level here and this level here, that was showing that that weakness was going to be played out. And at some point we should catch because the background is in red. We're in an uptrend in terms of price and volume. We just have found a local high at the moment with an exhaustion buy pattern and we're coming down. The reading here that we had on better momentum at those highs was uh, 6 million. And we're down here, I think this level down at these lows. What was that? It was actually negative 3, 3 million, 3.3 million. So it was actually pretty decent. It's bounced up a little bit here, but that was down to three. I don't know if we're going to see a level that will mirror that with a 6,000 read. But at this point, we're trying to find this bounce point uh, from which the market's going to rally. But it's not coming this week. So we have formed a pullback at an uptrend level on the daily chart here. So we've got some reason to be positive. You can see the PB level there for a pullback at an uptrend. So some cyclical support on the daily chart here, but we've not gone through the highs here that we made this week. We've not broken out to test into the 4,600 level yet. So we're still looking for that. I'm not sure we've found it yet, but I'll show you what I'm seeing on the lower time frame charts and see what you think, whether you think we found that bounce point or not. A 135 minute chart, there are exactly three 135 minute bars in a day session of the E-mini. And here you can see there's that pullback level on the intermediate time frame. I come in here on this time frame chart. I've got two supports here, lowest time frame, intermediate time frame. That's good for an area of a bounce, but do we have any other confirmation cyclically? Yes, that's looking good. But in terms of volume, we don't have any blue professional bars. We don't have any amateur bars saying the moves being led by the amateurs. We don't have any momentum patterns particularly uh, to show us the move on the 135 minute chart. So I'm not convinced. Uh, 45 minute chart here, you can see there's that uh, support level come in here. Still now on this time frame, you can see the backgrounds in gray, which means confirmed downtrend in terms of price and volume. 
So we're below the trailing stop on uh, better pro-am here. We've got some blue professional bars coming in at the lows here, and then some more here. We've got flush patterns going on. We've also got a cyclical support in due here. So these very thick lines here on better sine wave have come together. So potentially this is an area where we could get some uh, support in terms of price and we have blue professional bars at the lows we have a flush pattern there so that potentially is showing us on the 45 minute chart there that we could hold but uh, to get confirmation we need to break above 45 45 up here above the trailing stop that we have on better pro-am and that's quite a ways away so let's see if we manage that in the first few days of this week down to the 15 minute chart here uh, here we can see on the highest time frame, support has come in. We're played out in terms of a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. We've got another little tiny little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame in here as well. So it's actually a triple going on, triple with a couple of end of trends, which is good. Triple support on the highest time frame, lowest time frame, intermediate time frame all come together relatively close within about 25 points or so. So that's not too bad. But what we don't see is blue professional bars at the lows. They sold it down from this high. Uh, blue professional bars came in here, took profits or pushed it down even further, but they didn't seemingly step in at the lows, which isn't great. But that triple is good. Uh, on this level here, we'd have to reach above the 45-45 level again. Uh, so we need to see more blue professional bars. This needs to be ratcheted down to see blue professional bars come in to give a sense that uh, the professionals have bought the lows. So it's not convincing there on the 15. We've got just one or two blue professional bars here, none on the lows here, and they were actually selling that move down. So that's all the way down from the daily to the 15 minute chart. And then let's look at the uh, 13,500 tip bar chart. The difference with this chart is we're showing day and night session here. So it's a bit smoother. And you can see this week's activity, we go from the vertical solid yellow line here to the vertical solid yellow line at the end of the week. So you can see the week's activity. Uh, last weekend's video, I was saying I was expecting a little bit of a bounce first thing, but then that the market would push it down again. We'd finally get exhaustion patterns. And we did get that in 13,500 tip bar chart here. So we got a little bit of a bounce after Sunday, Monday, and then they sold it down super hard. And here we've got Rambo patterns at the lows. So poor old amateurs shorting it at that point there. They're getting wrong footed. The market moves the other way. Uh, we come back down again, super volatile. These ranges are big. And then we get exhaustion patterns down here. Some blue professional bars step in at those lows. Let me just come back to that, which is good. And normally I like to see the blue professional bars come in on the down leg. Uh, they caught it at that point and pushed it up. And the poor old amateurs get wrong footed at this point here. And I call that a Rambo to Rambo channel here to here. So they're going short at this point here. Wrong move goes the other way. Usually we'd see Rambo pans up at this point, but maybe they had their stops further. And they're going long at this point, thinking that the uh, the low is in for the market and they get wrong footed there as well. We test those lows and keep on pushing even lower. But at this point down here, we've got a couple of things. We've got some blue professional bars at the end of Friday, which is good. We've had our exhaustion cells, bullish divergence come in and better momentum is looking neutral at this point here. We had our pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. Is there an intermediate one there as well? They're not sure about that. And then we've had second cyclical turn after end of trend. So end of trend on the highest time frame, one cyclical turn, two cyclical turns. That is an area at which we might see a change in trend. And the market has broken into strength at this point here. And we're in the dark. The background is, is black. And we've gone from gray to black. We just need to punch above this trailing stop on better pro am 4489 or so above 4500. More blue professional bars rallying into that. And then we get triple signals going off here. And that would look good for a confirmed uptrend. So there's a little bit more going on in this chart to say that we might rally a bit. But it's a shame we didn't see blue professional bars there. Let's wait and see what happens early in the week, whether we get some blue professional bars to really show us what the professionals are up to at the moment. So tip bar charts, uh, here are the 15 markets that we look at. We've got our Forex markets, we've got the E-mini and the 10-year notes. We've got our precious metals, gold and silver, and then we've got Bitcoin. Uh, we've got our commodities with crude, natural gas and copper. And then we've got our ags with corn, soybeans and wheat. And we always start off with the Forex charts first. Let's go to the euro. No signals again this week. So the euro has just been batting backwards and forwards between nine and a bit and 10 and a bit. 
and no signals for the last three weeks, four weeks, I think, it's been without signals on the euro. Is there anything though lining up? Potentially some blue pressure bars here. We we were overbought at this point here. So the last signal on better sine wave was overbought instead of oversold. Typically we'd like to see the background in red. So uh, that doesn't look like it's gonna line up for a signal at the moment. British pound. Now I am long the British pound and I think I'm in too early on this. On the lower time frame charts, the 250 tip bar charts, there was a setup for me and I, I did like it, so I bought it, but I should have waited for confirmation. I think we need to get above certainly 27 and a half, maybe 28 uh, before getting kind of confirmation here. So the last couple of weeks, we had some triple signals short, which is good. Uh, down here, we have a whole bunch of blue professional bars, and that's why I like this trade. A whole bunch of blue professional bars on this time frame came in with exhaustion sell and bullish divergence. And normally from that type of pattern, you'd see a little bit of a V reversal and thing would quickly get going, but it didn't. It got back to the top of that range of the blue professional bars and then weakened after that. I don't know, I'm not convinced yet. We need to get above 27 and a half on British pound, but I'm still holding on to that trade at the moment. So that's British pound. Aussie dollar, this was a poor uh, signal here because we didn't have enough blue professional bars come in here. We've sunk down the last little move up with exhaustion buy, and then we quickly uh, fell back down into 65s. Uh, no exhaustion sell at this point, some blue professional bars here, but again, no signals on the Aussie dollar and it uh, doesn't look like we're going to get signals um, and we don't have the, the right setup for a uh, signal long because we don't have the exhaustion sell. So that's the Aussie dollar. Japanese yen. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. Japanese yen. I was thinking last week that you know maybe this is going to start to rally around 70 but you know we got to 71 blue professional bars came in and it just traded down hard down to 69.36 and I don't know what the low is from 10 months ago, but it's it's close uh, to that level. And at those lows, no blue professional bars in sight. So at some point it will signal, but and I'd like to say it's a good long-term signal, but we're not gonna get a signal until we see those blue professional bars come in. So let's uh, wait and see what happens. Uh, the, the tricky thing with this is, if we get a super hard rally uh, long um, in Japanese yen, that could be the result of the sell-off in equities uh, because you carry trade unwind and we see all of these forex markets risk on currencies uh, weakening so uh, for me that's something i'm a little bit worried about that we'll have uh, a nasty move down in the e-mini japanese yen will rally uh, and then all the risk on currencies will uh, drop so I don't know. Gold, we had a signal at the end of last week, never went anywhere, and we've continued to move down. But you know, if we break back above 1955 or so, that could be good for a signal in gold. So that's potential. And silver, silver, we had a signal this week. So although that's based on exhaustion cell, that was from this move here. So it's a little early there. But it's oversold down here at 22.75. So let's see if that strengthens this week. Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin again, super volatile. Look at all these blue fresh bars came in at 30,000, sold it down. Uh, they came in here, they sold it. Uh, they came in again here, pushed the move up, they sold it. We're back down here, no blue fresh bars though coming on this move down here yet. The signal was long because that um, bullish divergence signal came in. Uh, really late compared to the exhaustion signal there. Uh, crude, crude continues to strengthen. So we had a signal uh, last week, the week before last, and yep, super volatile, test down into that breakout point, comes back up, no signal short at this point. We're now up at 85, and I said a couple of weeks ago that uh, on the long time frame charts, crude was looking pretty strong. Natural gas, what a move that was down here from this signal all the way up to three bucks. I caught some of that, but I was out way too early. I was out here before this volatility. That turned out to be an awesome trade. And now we've signaled again, exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, flush patterns, some blue professional bars, not a lot come in here, oversold, we've signaled again. So that's interesting on natural gas and copper. Copper, uh, this was nice signal short, week before last and Poor signal here, that's really not at the right place because we don't have blue professional bars down here at the lows. But now we've got a whole bunch coming in at 375 down here. So let's see if we have some more blue professional bars coming on copper this week uh, to signal long. 
And then the AGs. So the AGs, we've got a signal long at the moment with corn. Not a whole bunch of loop threshold bars before that signal, but now we do have a lot at the end of the week. So that's interesting on corn. Uh, soybeans, uh, a whole bunch of blue fresh bars that seemingly on that move back up, the professionals sold it down on that move and we kept on weakening with an, an exhaustion cell signal. So nothing there on soybeans. And wheat, a nice signals at the end of last week, beginning of this week, we've come back down to this level here. More blue professional bars come in. We had signals at the end of last week, beginning of this week. Not a huge amount of blue professional bars down here at the lows, but this is better here. So maybe this is going to signal again if we break above 638, 640. So I don't know. Maybe we've done enough on the downside for the Ebony to start to rally. These exhaustion patterns weren't particularly nasty. There wasn't a whole bunch of blue professional bars came in at the lows. But maybe cyclically, we've done enough uh, on the downside. and We're going to rally in the E-mini. That'd be nice uh, because it would start to rally some of these other, other currencies, get me out of trouble on my British pound position. So we'll just have to see how, how this plays out. I do have to think, though, on the higher time frame charts that we are still in an uptrend. Uh, so at some point, this market will catch. Uh, maybe we, we have to uh, see a blue professional bar on something nasty on the downside in order to make that happen. But let's wait and see. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, looking forward to next week's trade. Hope your trading is going well.